there's a reason I keep talking about gaming on the Mac year after year after year. It's because Apple keeps talking about gaming on the Mac every single year. The company will brag about an old AAA title coming to the platform. They parade out the developers that say, oh, what a pleasure it's been porting to Mac OS. Then the old new game releases as the only major game and mums the word until the following year where they do the whole dog and pony show all over again. Historically, Apple's half-hearted commitment to gaming on the Mac didn't really matter because Bootcamp enabled access to your entire Steam library within Windows. Furthermore, while Apple failed for years to put capable graphics chips in their computers, they did support and even actively encouraged the use of external GPUs via Thunderbolt. So gaming on the Mac, while never mainstream nor affordable, was possible for those determined. Then Apple Silicon happened and appended everything. With an entirely new system architecture, one different from any other mainstream desktop computer before it, the prospect of gaming on the Mac became even more far-fetched, for the ability to play Windows games had disappeared altogether. Over the last two and a half years, most game titles from Apple Arcade have successfully transitioned to Apple Silicon, but that's to be expected given that they already support iOS. If we're talking real games, PC games, only a mere handful have been made available, making the complete jump to ARM and implementing support for the Metal Graphics API. But let's pretend, just for a minute, that's not a problem, okay? Can a modern Mac even play a AAA game? Well, I used the $2,000 Hackintosh we built a few months ago, this time running Windows as our control. So an upper mid-range gaming build that a reasonable person might put together in 2023. Then I took Apple's cheapest, and most expensive current Mac offerings, the $1,100 M2 MacBook Air and $7,000 M2 Ultra Mac Pro. Last, because I'm a stupid procrastinator, we have my what was $10,000, but is now worthless, unsold 2019 Mac Pro, complete with its W5700X GPU upgrade. The results surprised me a lot. In Layers of Fear, a game released this year, the M2 Ultra held its own against the PC well and actually vastly outperformed the older x86 Mac Pro. As for the MacBook Air, while not cutting edge, it was certainly more than playable. And this wasn't just on Layers of Fear, this trend continued with No Man's Sky and Resident Evil Village. Now the MacBook Air did fall apart in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but the 2023 Mac Pro sure didn't. So what does this tell us? I think something rather important, and that's that every single Mac that Apple sells today can game right out of the box. Now that might seem like a silly thing to say, but that wasn't the case just a couple years ago. That being said, let's not lose sight of reality here. None of Apple's current offerings, no matter how much money you are willing to spend, can match the gaming performance of even upper mid-range PCs. Additionally, if you take all of that chart data, average out the results, and divide to get a dollars per frame cost, your wallet will slap you promptly in the face. <laughs> now the Apple fanboys will staunchly declare, well that's like complaining your Prius doesn't tow a double axle U-Haul well. That may be true on the thin and light MacBook Air, but we have to stop using efficiency as an excuse for inadequacy on Apple's desktop computers, especially the Mac Pro because this was not always the plan. There was supposed to be a hotter, more powerful chip. And so now we easily find ourselves in the trope that is, well, every Mac gaming video or article released since the dawn of time. So let me suggest something radical. Nothing that I've talked about so far matters at all. <laughs> Apple's gaming problem is not one of hardware. So then it must be software, no? There's a lot of attention surrounding Apple's new game porting toolkit. Released at WWDC, GPT has been talked about ad nauseum, so I won't delve too much into it. But in short, it is a graphics emulation layer that combines Wine and Apple's own in-house D3D Metal to run DirectX games on macOS. It's not all that dissimilar in execution from Proton, which allows normies like you and I to run Windows games on Linux machines, like the very popular Steam Deck. But Apple's GPT has a very different intended user base, and that is developers. The goal is not to have end users, like you and I, run games kinda okay. Which you can do, by the way. <laughs> Here are some of our test results. No, no, the goal is to have game studios that haven't even previously considered the Mac boot up their games and go, hey, this actually kinda works okay. 
and then spend weeks or months, or in the case of Hello Games, two years to port their game to the Mac officially. It's a really amazing tool, and it works shockingly well, but it doesn't matter. And it's not going to make a difference. That's a hot take, but I genuinely believe it, because Apple's gaming problem is not one of hardware, nor is it one of software. It is a strategic problem, and I don't think that Apple knows this. We used to only have a limited amount of Macs that we made that could really do high-end gaming. And the difference is now every Mac that we sell is capable of doing high-end gaming. Because of what we've done with Apple Silicon, because we've done with our unified memory, our GPUs, they are, so the economics for game developers has changed substantially. No, they haven't. I think Apple is hoping that they can just follow the, if you build it, they will come strategy, because, well, that's what worked with the iPhone. But the Mac is not the iPhone. It is a mature platform competing against a behemoth of an incumbent with nothing particularly novel to offer. Apple doesn't even know how to distribute its games with its cherry-picked partners that it parades around on stage. No Man's Sky, it's not on the Mac App Store. And Resident Evil Village is only on the Mac App Store. The App Store sucks chunks for discovering, purchasing, and downloading games libraries, especially when compared to Steam or any number of Windows games launchers. You can't be slightly less mediocre than you've been for years and expect to emerge as victor over your competitors that have excelled in this market for decades. It won't work. If Apple really wants gaming on the Mac to happen, they need one of two things to happen. Market share or money. Take the Nintendo Switch. It is a handheld running an eight and a half year old mobile chip with an extremely limited amount of memory and onboard storage. A platform that famously lacks good porting tools to the extent that there are entire companies in existence that solely bring games to the device. It lacks everything that the Mac has, yet games still come to the console in spades across the board. Why? Because Nintendo rewards popular games with favorable placement in a shop that is easily accessible to 130 million consoles, a greater number of dedicated game devices than Apple has sold general purpose computers in the same period of time. That's right, more Switches than Macs in the last six years. And not every Mac is going to game. Developers are not going to risk spending money and resources to port and support a platform with no buyers. So without market share, Apple needs money to play ball. And good news, Apple invented money. Rather than assume a reward with no risk, Apple needs to be the one to put their money where their mouth is. This will go beyond paying devs to bring their old games to the Mac. They will need to, at minimum, buy day one rights to a popular franchise, or better yet, purchase an exclusive IP or well-known game studio and disseminate that game cheaply through a massively retooled app store or, frankly, entirely separate program designed for games. There is huge opportunity for subscription revenue here, an earnings category that Apple is obsessed with. Microsoft, Sony, and even Nintendo are pursuing this hard. So too could Apple. Pay devs so much money and charge users so little that neither side can say no to coming to the Mac. And then, once there's enough market share, well, do what businesses do and start milking end users by raising prices. But not without these steps, because without them, nothing is going to happen. It is clear to me that people at Apple care about desktop gaming. GPT, game mode, and everything that they've continued to talk about over years, it wouldn't exist if people didn't care. Heck, the hardware they offer even has tons of advantages that traditional PCs don't. Imagine being able to obtain decent frame rates on a completely silent, absolutely fanless system with better battery life and speakers and frankly displays than any other laptop on the market. That would be fantastic. Part of Apple cares, but it's time for all of Apple to care. And that means executives, because they are the only holdouts that can command change. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Do you ever game on your Mac? Did you? Will you in the future if there were more options? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, stay snazzy.